dressed and I was thinking about service. And all of a sudden, I just felt like something extraordinary is going to happen today. I feel something extraordinary, something great in God.
we can have some flyers, passing out some flyers. Amen. Amen. And then we have a, a mass conference coming up. Uh, mm, Tuesday night, we're going to have a skateboard. Tuesday night, we're going to have Bobby Penny here at 7 o'clock. And then we're going to have a mass conference in Merced. Hallelujah, in Merced. We're going to see you in Merced. Thursday uh, through Saturday. Amen. Thursday through Saturday next week. A men's conference in Merced. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then, praise God. I enjoy those part service, you know. I really enjoy those. And it, it's, it's a little bit of work, but it's all for the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, did you see Chris? Chris? Yeah, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then well, we do have a, uh, after we do have a, a pair of requests tonight. Amen. Uh, we have a pair of requests for Doug Stead for a special need. Amen. Yeah. And we have Bill for healing, a miracle healing for yeah. him. Amen. Amen. We have ba Barbara for deliverance. Hallelujah. And we have the souls of this to acknowledge them uh, to God or the souls of all these culprits. Amen. We're going to reach out to them, to the backslider. Amen. Prepare for revival. Prepare yes. for revival. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many can say it? Revival. Revival. Oh, avivamiento en español. Avivamiento. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Dios. Praise the Lord. Yes.
Acknowledge him yes. in everything. Yes. You don't have to acknowledge him right now that he's doing what he's right. supposed to do and all that. Right. Believe that he's going to heal us. Right. He's going to touch us. Yes. Yes. Right. Miracle of whatever of all, of our, all we have. Amen. Thank God is going to be set. God is my God yes. is great. Right. Right. My God is great. We're going to pick up an offering today, the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going to pray for this offering. God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to right now, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this offering we're about to see. We see right now. Bless it, Lord Jesus. God, in your name, hold it up. Bless you, Lord Jesus.
I've been around and I've preached a lot of home mission churches. And I'm excited for what I feel is going on in this place. Mm, I like what I feel. God's got revival burning in this place. If somebody will just step into it. Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter number 12. We're going to start reading with verse number 5. Very familiar passage of scripture. The Bible said Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Somebody see that prayer meeting was going all night long. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains. Sounds like the world around us. Kept in prison, bound with chains, and don't know how to get loose. Bible said and the keepers were before the door kept the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and shined a light in that prison and he smote Peter on the side and he raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Oh, yes. And verse 9 says, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by an angel, but thought he saw a vision. The word wist, W-I-S-T, a unique word in the word of the Lord. This is probably the only time it was ever mentioned. The word wist literally means to fail, to properly discern, or to know. In other words, Peter could not believe that what was happening to him was really happening. He thought he was having a dream. He thought he was seeing a vision. He couldn't believe this was actually happening. But it gets worse. The Bible said, and as Peter knocked at the door of the cave, the damsel came to hearken, they rode up. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened up the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said, the prayer meeting said, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. You're kidding. Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And finally, they relented and said, well, it must be his angel. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather not have those folks praying for me. <laughs> they were having a prayer meeting. They were asking God for a miracle. And when God and the miracle showed up at the door, they couldn't believe it happened. But there was a little young teenage girl named Rhoda. She went to the door. She heard the knock. She went there and she heard a familiar voice. As Peter began to announce who he was. And the Bible said that she got so excited. She forgot to open the door. It sounds like some church folks I know. You pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. And God finally gives you an answer. And you forget to open the door. Or you don't believe it's happening. One thing that bothers me the most is when I stand in testimony service. And I hear somebody stand up and say, God did this. I've been praying for this. And God gave us a miracle. And then they follow it up. I'm telling you, every time they'll follow it up by saying, I can't believe God did it. Seriously? You've been praying all this time. Believing in a God that can do anything. God takes care of it and then you're going to turn around and say you can't believe it happened. It must not have been your faith that made it happen then. Hallelujah. If God will help me for a few short moments of time tonight, I want to preach to you on this simple thought. Open the door and let your miracle in. Hallelujah. Pastor, will you pray? We thank you, Lord God, for your presence that we feel tonight. Yes. Lord Jesus, your spirit that Do is it, moving Jesus. amongst us here in this place. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, let us have our ears. Have your way tonight, Lord. Let us receive your word right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Look at your neighbor and say, when your miracle's knocking, open the door. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for standing and honoring of the reading of the word tonight. Thank you, music. Hallelujah. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. There are elements in this world that when we try to tell them that something great is going on, something powerful is happening, the revival is beginning to move and shake and flow in our midst. Somebody's going to look at you and say, you are crazy. You must be out of your mind. You've lost it. You're mad. But thank God that there was a young lady that day in that prayer meeting. Constantly affirmed, she went back and told him, No, you don't understand that miracle that you've been praying for. It's standing at the door. That miracle you've been begging God for has shown up on the doorstep. It's here. God did exactly what we've been praying for. But that little prayer group was so spiritual that they couldn't believe that God could answer their prayers. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, they were spiritual enough to finally give in to Rhoda, telling them that the miracle was at the door, that they finally said, well, it must be his angel. So what you're telling me is you can believe that God could have an angel standing at the door talking to Rhoda, but you can believe that God can answer your prayer with the miracle you've been asking for.
I'm at the end of my rope. How many times have I heard that? I'm at the end of my rope. And I'm just going to tie a knot at it and hang on for dear life. But I'm here to tell you right now, if you're dependent upon hanging on a rope, hallelujah, you're going to fall. You're going to have problems. You're going to be defeated. God said what you need to do is let go of the rope and hang on to faith. Because he said now faith. Now faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to have faith in God. We need to have faith in the master. Hallelujah. And he knows where we're at. And he knows what we're going through. Several years ago, I was preaching revival. Hallelujah in Kentucky. And the, about the third night of revival, the pastor and I were standing on the platform, and his mama, 72 years old, and she's never late for church. Always on time, always there, faithful. Yeah. This particular night, it was drizzling rain outside, rain pouring down. Something had delayed her for the first time, and she was in a frantic, she was in a panic. I can't be late for church. i got to get to the house of God. She drove as fast as she could, ran into that driveway, threw it in the park, jumped out of the car, and there was about 10 concrete steps to get to the top threshold. Hallelujah, that church building. She ran all the way to the top of those steps, and when her foot hit the top of that step, hallelujah, her foot went out from under. She fell backwards all the way down those concrete steps. And when she hit the bottom, her Arm snapped like a toothpick. I'm talking about a solid break. I'm talking one bone sticking out here, one bone sticking out here, and a puddle of blood flowing underneath her arm. She screamed in agony and pain. Hallelujah. She grabbed her arm and she pulled it to her side. She could have easily said, Somebody call 911. But what was in her mind? She needed to get to the house of God. She was late. Hallelujah. She knew when she got there, there's going to be a Jesus that's got it all in control. So she grabs her arm to her side, blood pooling. She walks up those steps and into that back door. And I could see her as soon as she walked through the door. Something was wrong. You could see the anguish and the pain on her face. I nudged her, her son, the pastor. I said, something's wrong with your mama. He took a look at her and instantly knew. He ran off that platform. I was right behind him. We met her at the back door. Hallelujah. He said, Mama, what's the matter? Shouting people, shouting and dancing. We're having worship. He's back there saying, Mama, what's the matter? She let go of her arm and just kind of flopped down. She screamed in pain. You could see the blood that was pooling on the carpet beneath her. She said, Now, I don't 
don't know about you, but let me use my imagination for a second. Put myself in his shoes. The preacher tells me I'm going to die. Get my house in order. You know what I'm doing? I'm picking up the phone. I'm calling the funeral home. I'm making arrangements. i got to get down there tomorrow and pick out a casket. Hallelujah. i got to go down to the graveyard. i got to pick out a place where I'm going to lay. i got to go down to the tombstone company. i got to make sure they write everything I want on my tombstone. i got to go down and buy me a brand new suit so I look good when I'm laying in the casket. Why? Because the preacher said, I'm going to die. Right. Come on. The Bible said that before that preacher got to the outer courts, he was still in the middle somewhere. God said, I changed my mind. I want you to go right back in there and tell him that I've added 15 years to his life. Yes. So the Bible said he walked right back in there. Come man, preacher, what are you doing here? I thought you left. I did. But God stopped me in the court and told me to come back and tell you that he added 15 years to your life. Come on. And what did Hezekiah say? Preacher, don't lie to me. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are so quick to be able to hang on to the doom and gloom. Come on. To the prophesiers that say everything's going to go wrong. Everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to split right open. Our cradle, our bowels going to break. And our cradle's going to fall. We're so quick to believe that because that's the way we're trained. That we can't understand when God walks in with a blessing. It is for you. It's not your name on it. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. There wasn't any way of working on him. They didn't know what to do. Hallelujah. All I knew is to keep him. 
him home and trust God that he was going to take care of the situation. Mama sat in the rocking chair every single day for six solid weeks holding that baby. Hallelujah. That thing began to cough and cough and cough. She did everything she could to try to comfort him. She patted him. She rocked him. She walked around with him. Hallelujah. She cried over him. She prayed for him. Hallelujah. And all he did was cough, cough, cough. And then that six weeks I came home from work one night and I walked through the door and I could tell something was already going on. Mama's eyes were swollen red because she cried so much. She cried her tear ducts dry. Hallelujah. I walked in and I instantly knew something happened. I said, Mama, what's the matter? She looked at me and found one more tear as it began to trickle down her face. And she said, Daddy, if you don't get God to do something tonight, this baby isn't going to be here in the morning. I said, what? There's only one thing I know to do. I'm not running to the hospital. I'm not going down to the emergency room. I know one place I'm going. I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to take him to church. Hallelujah. God's going to take care of this for me. We wrapped him up in a blanket. We drove to the church. We pulled into the driveway. And there wasn't a light on in the church. I thought for sure nobody was there. I walked through the back doors and just over the pulpit. I walked through that back door and all of a sudden I heard moaning and groaning. It was my pastor knelt at the altar. He was praying. He knew I was coming. God had already talked to him. Hallelujah. I walked through that door. He stood up from where he's praying. He looked back at me and he said, son, what's going on? I walked halfway down that aisle and I literally took my baby and threw it to him. Yes. Mid air, he catches my baby in his arms. And I said, Preacher, you've got to get God to do something because if you don't, he's not going to be here in the morning. My pastor stopped and he looked at me. Thank God for a man of God that'll tell you what you need to hear, even if you don't feel good. Come on. Come on. He looked at me and he said, Son, I couldn't get God to do it today for you. If I wanted to, with the spirit and the attitude that you're in. Yes, sir. Whoa. I don't think that will slap you real hard. That's right. I got every right in the world to be upset and aggravated. My baby's about to die. I'm in panic mode. Help me, God. Help me, somebody. My baby's about to die. And here I've got the man of God telling me my spirit's crossed up. Come on. Well, you know what? Sometimes I got to work on me. Yeah. Sometimes I got to work on me. Even as a preacher, sometimes I gotta work on me. Hallelujah. I'm not perfect. Hallelujah. I still got flesh. I still got issues. I still got things rise up in my life. I've got to understand that my spirit, my attitude still needs to be godly and holy before the Lord. I can't let myself get turned loose. Or I'll make hell just as much as anybody else. He looked at me and he said, You need to get your spirit and attitude right. And I said, yes, sir. I humbled myself. I bowed my head. I said, yes, sir. I said, just hold on for a minute. Let me spend some time in the altar. I went ran right past him. And I slid into that altar. And I buried my health and my face in that carpet. And I began to cry out to God for 30 solid minutes. I begged God. I pleaded with God. I prayed to God. I did everything I knew. I got back up and I turned around and my pastor never moved. He's standing right there. Just holding my baby. And you know what I heard laying in his arms? Nothing. The sweetest sound I've ever heard. My baby wasn't wheezing. He wasn't coughing. He wasn't grouping. He wasn't doing anything. Right. The story's not over. He hands me my baby. And as soon as I take my baby, he starts coughing and wheezing again. I hand him back to my pastor. He quits. He hands him back to me. And he starts it all over again. I handed back to my pastor and I said, you know what? There must be something still in there I missed somewhere. Hold on to him for a few more minutes. I'm going to bury myself in that altar one more time. I've got to make sure I'm right with God because I need a miracle. I need to make sure I'm in my spirit's right. I need something from God. I need the Holy Ghost to move for me. i got to make sure that everything's clean between me and him. big puddle of snot and tears on that altar. Yes. I got back up. Yes. He looked at me and he said, did you get everything right between you and God? Tears in my eyes. I said, yes sir, I believe I did. 
Hallelujah. He handed me my baby, and from that day to this, I can't tell you a sick day in that boy's life. Hallelujah. He's an assistant pastor over in Wood Lake now. Hallelujah. I don't know if the boy's ever been sick. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost came down and gave us a miracle. The Holy Ghost came down and provided what we needed. Hallelujah. After I got my spirit right, after I got my attitude corrected, after everything was clean in my soul,
things happen to prove to you that what I just said was true. Really. Hallelujah. You've got this little prayer meeting. They're over here praying for a miracle. Hallelujah. Asking for God to set Peter free out of the prison. They never believed it from the beginning he was going to do that. They already knew he was in the inner prison. Had guards on the inside, guards on the outside. Hallelujah. He was chained down with chains and fetters. Hallelujah. He was guarded day and night. There was no way he was going to get out. But we're just going to pray and go through the motions and make it look good because we really don't believe it's going to happen. Come but on. God walked through the door that night. Amen. Come on. God walked through the door that night. He sent forth his angel. And that angel went down and he woke Peter up. He said, Get up and get dressed. Speed, and as he did, the chains literally fell off from his body. Hallelujah. He dressed himself up with clothes, he put his shoes on, and he followed that angel right out the front door. Hallelujah. I don't know where the guards were, it don't make a difference. When God's in charge, it never matters anyway. God's going to lead you through right in the face of your enemy, right down Main Street, so everybody can see. shows up at the door. <laughs> Nothing happens. They're all in their bombard in heaven. They're praying. Oh, help Peter, help him. Get him out of prison. Get him out of prison. And here he is knocking at the door. Finally, one young lady realizes that God said to watch and pray. Yeah. Don't get so engulfed in your prayer you can't hear the knock at the door. Come on. She yeah. got up. She walks to the door. Who is it? It's Peter. Who? Peter. The Peter that was in prison? Yes. The Peter that was in chains? Yes. The Peter we've been praying for? Yes, it's Peter. And the Bible said she got so excited. She forgot to open the door. <laughs> yes. Right. Some of us get so excited, we shout and dance. We worship God over the things that are going to happen and could happen and yeah. might happen. Yeah. That when it's actually standing at the door, we get so excited, we forget to open the door. We just want it like. Come on. It's still standing there waiting on somebody to let him in. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. All she had to do, she didn't have to go back there and contend with the prayer meeting. She didn't have to go back there and debate with them and fuss back and forth. All she had to do was open the door and he'd have walked in and said, here I am. Yeah, man. But she left him at the door. I'm here to declare to somebody tonight, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost spoke to me today in prayer that somebody left a miracle standing at the door. God's got your miracle. You've been praying about it. You've been seeking God for it. You've been Somebody. 
Almighty God said today, Hallelujah, that thing that you've been praying for has been standing at the door waiting on you to let it in. All you got to do is get up from your prayer meeting. Go to the door. Hallelujah. And just open the thing up and let the miracle walk through that door. Hallelujah. He's here tonight to bless somebody. He's here tonight to heal somebody. story for you tonight. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Several years ago, I was preaching revival in northern Louisiana. Hallelujah. At the time, we were parked in south Louisiana. Hallelujah. Two boys in the back will know exactly what I'm talking about, since both of them are from Louisiana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we were preaching revival, and we had a great move of God. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost moved. I mean, we had bodies laying everywhere. Things were happening. People talking in tongues. It was one of those services where the preacher couldn't even shut it down. He just kind of said, you know, if you want to go home, go ahead. If you want to stay, stay. There's, I can't do anything about it. This is God's in control. Right. Yes. It's about midnight. All right. All right. And we just got to the end. People laying all over the place, talking in tongues. I saw, he said, the fellowship hall is open. I saw him drag one sister in the fellowship hall. She is still talking in tongues. Could even speak English. I know the Holy Ghost was all over her. I'm telling you, they were having church. All right. It was a powerful move of God. Yeah. Yes. Finally, about 2 o'clock in the morning, things kind of died down. My wife and I and my three boys, my babies, my youngest son was in diapers at the time. Hallelujah. And... Uh, we got in our proud. I had a brand new car. Never had a brand new car in my life and never had one since. That was my only one I ever owned. Hallelujah. Got my brand new little car at 5,000 miles on it. I was so happy with that thing. I put my two older boys in the back seat, laid them down. I buckled them up with a seat belt because I knew they were going to go to sleep. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. They were already almost out of it. My little baby sat in my mom in my wife's lap on, over on the passenger side. I was driving. We turned out on Interstate 55 and we headed south. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've never been down there, you don't understand that the interstate down there in the media, the middle of the interstate, isn't like out here on 99. It's pine trees 40 feet high, as far as you can see, yes. dividing the highway. You can't even see the other side of the interstate half the time. Because how thick the pine trees are. Yeah. We're driving down the interstate. There's not a cloud in the sky. The moon's are shining. Everything's going good. We're still feeling the presence of the Holy Ghost. The boys are sleeping in the back seat. Mama's in the front seat patting the little baby while they're sleeping. We're talking about the goodness of God and all that He did. And how God moved mightily in that service. And all of a sudden a sound came out from underneath my vehicle. Hallelujah. It began to slide sideways. When it did, I Grab that steering wheel and tried to hang on. And about a mile down the road, it slid the other way sideways. For about two and a half miles, I laid rubber all the way down that road, sliding sideways to sideways. And at the end of that stretch, it went into the median of the interstate. The two tires hit the bottom of that ditch, and my car went airborne and began to flip in over in over in. Wow. Yes. Wow. It flew upside down. Backwards, and the back of that car slammed into the trunk of the tree. It hit so hard that that entire trunk and back seat of that car, all the way up to the driver's seat, wrapped around that tree, came to a stop upside down. Hallelujah! Scariest thing we'd ever been through. As soon as we landed, Mom and I. We're suspended upside down in our seatbelts holding us up. Glass is still shattering. Metal still twisting. Dust is still billowing everywhere. Hallelujah. And all I can say is, Mama, where's the baby? And she had the baby tucked in her hand. Hallelujah. And as any mama, her instincts kicked in. She began to feel around on the baby's hand. She began to run her hands down her arms, down his little body, down his legs. He said, I think the baby's okay, but then something clicked in Mama. She said, Seat. I turned around and there was no back seat. Yes. Frantic, I somehow managed to get the 
seatbelt loose fell to the ground and on my stomach I crawled out the driver's side window. That's the only way of escape out of that twisted, mangled mess of a vehicle. Uh, hallelujah. I stood up. I thought eons of time had passed, uh, but the wheels were still spinning. Uh, hallelujah. The dust was still blowing. Uh, I got up and I looked around and I said, God, where are my two boys? And you know what I saw? Standing on the side of the interstate were my two boys. Not a scratch, not a drop of blood, not a broken bone. I'm here to tell somebody, God's got a miracle. God's got a miracle. God can do it for you. He put my boys right out of the back seat and stood them. From a dead sleep, stood them on the side of the interstate. time he comes and preaches and he'll tell you it happened but he don't remember any of it all he knows is he remembers waking up and he's looking out from the side of the interstate seeing an upside down car and his daddy calling his name wow. i'm telling you that's the kind of god we serve that's the kind of god that's in this place right now that's the god that spoke to me today that's the god that's got your miracle in his hand Yes. 
the Holy Ghost says you need to tune yourself into God. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost speak into your spirit and speak into your situation. He knows right where you're at and He knows what you're facing. Let the Holy Ghost have it right now as you take that step in faith.
Ghost do it. Come on, God's moving in this place. God's moving in this place. There's a spirit of revival in this church.